This is a game changer. Yeah, this. This is an RF power splitter. How does it work? I have no idea. Legitimate truth. I can probably look it up, but I, I have this here. Why don't I just uh, take it open, take a peek inside. Let's see if we can make heads or tails of what the circuit looks like. And let's see how it's different from a T on a feed line in evaluating the performance of two different radios or two different receivers. Let's have a look. The case has six screws on each side. So I'm gonna start with what they what would ostensibly call the face because the one with the label. This is a mini circuits power splitter, Zulu November 2, Papa Delta 2 50 Sierra Plus. I got this at the Fort Wayne Hamfest. I checked the data sheet and it will do what I needed to do. Definitely part of what I had to do at the Fort Wayne Hamfest was look up this product number and figure out in what portion of the band it works in. And this one specifically encompasses enough to allow me to do the 1090 portion, which is what I bought it for, so that I can compare ADS-B receiver software defined radios without using a T. I got some constructive criticism in some of my videos comparing SDRs and I'm perfectly capable of taking constructive criticism since I didn't want to continue this without having a proper power splitter instead of a T. I kind of put a hold on testing any more units until I got one of these. I picked this up at the Fort Wayne Ham Fest a few weeks ago and it's kind of simple. Obviously the ground is common all the way around. Let me get the multimeter over here and do some measurement to see what, what in the world we have here. It's visually obvious to me that the ground is common all the way around using the chassis, but I'm gonna test it. There we go. And I shouldn't have anything on the traces or the pins. Let's just hit the shield. Hit the shield. Now let's see if we can go pin center to center here. Obviously it should, I just don't know how much is gonna tone it out. Don't know how much. Electrically, there does not seem to be any loss at all, but I know based on the spec sheet that this thing has something like two and a half dB of loss, uh, of insertion loss. So obviously that happens on the RF side. Let's see what we have here. Obviously there's continuity there because they're both center traces. Oh, hang on, let me. So we started about a half ohm and we're down, settling down to two ohm, point, point two ohm. A zero, 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 zero. Zero all the way except to the bottom here. This bottom one has, oh, this one's reading zero now. Now I gotta figure out what's going on. Well, I don't know what kind of component that is. Let's see if it's a capacitor. Nothing of capacitance there, or there, or there. These all look the same, but, I, but they're not identified. And the thing is, these traces have a very distinctive shape. I'm guessing that the shape matters. I'm gonna have to look this up now. This is not at all what I expected to find in here. I expected to find something to actually, you know, very easily, visibly split the power. And of course, this is splitting the power, but there's some components in here that I can't tell what those are. Let me get a different multimeter and see what we have. Okay, let's see. Let's switch this multimeter to resistance mode. Let's see how many, let's see if this is a resistor. This is calling 0.28 ohms. Since these are, these are in parallel, this is reading 0.26. 0.25, huh, ah, okay, we're going down, oh, check that. Somewhere between 0.25 and 0.24, it's fluctuating back and forth. 0.22 or 0.23. So we have an increasing level of resistance the farther down the wine we go. We're at 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33, 0.34, 0.35, 0.
0.17 or 1.8 ohm and 0.14. So these are the lowest resistance is up here. The highest resistance is down here. So it's a ladder of resistance. Still reading 0.8, just checking. So we have a ladder of resistors of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven resistors in increasing values. And I'm guessing that these traces, the length of these traces matters. That's just a guess, I don't know. But they're very distinctive and definitive for each step. Does the backside have anything? No, the backside is basically solid. There's an, so this is the back plate and there's a cutout on both ends, basically to allow the terminal to have clearance on the board after soldered. But other than that, it's just a solid back end there. Such a simple circuit. We put this back together. So I haven't reassembled. Now I gotta dig into how that circuit works so that I can understand it. Now that we've seen the guts of this thing, we have a general idea of how it is laid out on the inside. And I went to the ARRL's uh, handbook for 2023, expecting there to be a section in there about power dividers and directional couplers. And guess what, I, I, I didn't. I didn't find that in there. And thus, here we are the wonderful internet and of all places wikipedia yay reading through wikipedia we find out that there's a few types of power dividers i'll put links to everything i'm showing you here in the descriptions i've already read through this and based on what i'm what i've seen here what we what i have on hand is a resistive power divider the array of resistors that we saw between the traces yeah that thing Based on reading this, it lines up that what we have is a resistive power divider because resistive power dividers are very wide banded. And both examples that I have on this video are very wide banded, as you saw earlier in the part descriptions. There are a couple other websites with information about power dividers. I'll put all, all of this on the links if you want to read more about it. Basically, three types, you know, reactive, resistive, and hybrid. And you decide what you're going to buy or what you're going to get or build based on your needs. It happens that I lucked out. I buy, lucked out on some resistive power dividers and given how wide of a bandwidth the resistive ones can handle, the two that I have actually manage the frequencies that I care about right now. I wanna be on the lookout for more power dividers that are a little bit, that are in different portions of the band spectrum for other experiments. But for now, it's really neat to see that there's a resource out there. Yeah, you know, Wikipedia, yay! That tells us how all this stuff really works. And now that I know what I have and sort of how it works, I can understand how some people were saying that my prior experiment was really not all that great because of the impedance from one to the other. Uh, that was discussed on one of these, I think. Just a straight T connection, there we go. And uh, how the impedance from one can disrupt the other and so on and so forth. I'll let you read up on it if you really care about it. In reality, I now have a means of testing the ability of these USB dongles to receive ADSB signals in a more controlled way with a power divider. And I'm going to be running these SDRs through a battery of testing like I did before, but now using the power divider to show us what's going on in terms of what the USB SDRs are receiving in way of ADSB signal and going through and ranking them once again. I hope this was useful to you and uh, be on the lookout for a few more ADSB receiver that should hopefully pin down which the best receiver is for us to use when we're receiving these types of signals. That's all I have on this one, folks. We'll catch you in the next one, 7-3.